Okay, so we're back, and this is part two of our Arch Linux installation. We've completed the base install. Now, you've powered off, and you've taken your USB or your CD out of the drives, and you're ready to restart. I'll hit restart, and we get back in full screen here, and there's our grub that you just saw us install. Patiently waited that five seconds for it to start on its own. Okay, the first thing I usually do is just log in with my user account. And the reason is I just want to make sure it works. And there it is. So now if I'm in my user account, you always have to invoke sudo, which stands for super user do it now. <laughs> but not really. So I'm going to run sudo super user pacman space hyphen s capital S yyu. Be online and we are. See our pacman and our progress bar there. Well, it should return nothing left to do because we just downloaded and installed all the latest and greatest packages. Very nice. Okay, so again, I am in sudo, or I'm in my user account. Okay, now in order to run commands with a user account, you're always going to have to use sudo. You could do this two ways. You could just sign in as root and not have to invoke sudo, or you can just invoke sudo with your command. So I'm going to invoke sudo and stay in my user account, pacman hyphen s to install. And we're going to want some drivers. Oops, not x in it, but x org and x org hyphen x in it, x org hyphen apps xorg hyphen did i do x in it i did drivers xorg hyphen server xorg hyphen x clock xorg hyphen x kill i believe x kill Let's see i count them one two three four five six seven and hit enter we're gonna hit enter 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 okay and that's asking me for confirmation to install it and it's a little over 33 megabyte install 50 56 and a half megabyte completely installed now what these are as you can imagine these are video drivers and they're called xorg and, it's, and you could probably get away with just installing xorg, but instead I opt to install every one of them all the way down to xorg x clock. And the reason is they don't they don't hurt anything. You see, all of them combined are less than 57 megabytes complete, and they're not hurting anything. If I don't need them, they're just sitting there, and I can afford to give it 57 megabytes of disk space. And that's the reason why I get them all. Now, there may be cases where you don't need them all. And, you know, like I said, it don't hurt to have them. And we're fixing to install a graphical user interface, desktop environment, and also a desktop manager, which will take control of the computer while it's booting up. Grub will hand over whatever it does it'll hand it over to the desktop manager and the desktop manager will seek and search and load up the desktop so that's done i'm going to control l clear screen get back down here 
Now we can say pseudo <laughs> Pac-Man hyphen S and we're going to get XFCE4 XFCE4 hyphen goodies then we're going to get XDG XDG hyphen user hyphen DIRS directories and we're going to get light DM and we're going to get light DM hyphen GTK hyphen greeter then we're going to get light DM hyphen GTK hyphen greeter hyphen settings okay let me check my spelling we got XFCE XFCE4 XFCE4 goodies XDG user dyers like DM for our startup manager or desktop manager that's it hit enter 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 okay the entire installation size is 233 megabytes <laughs> download size 56 megabytes that's pretty good less than 250 megs for a complete desktop installation and however it is bare and you will have an entire <laughs> array of software that you're going to want and need and this is going to take a minute let me i'm going to control f get out of full screen here which we're not far from booting up it's 91 percent through with this let me go ahead and control f get back to full screen here now i do know already that you're going to need some plugins or, or utilities or software for sound at least i have on every single installation of xfce i've done whether it be in VirtualBox on real machines, Toshiba, a Dell, I did it on an HP laptop, and I had to had to do the same thing. So, not saying on all of them, but I am saying your chances are good. Okay, that got finished. I'm gonna Control L to clear the screen. Now, most important here, system. Oops, how to invoke sudo? Sudo system. CTL, all one word, and then we're going to enable the light DM period service. Hit enter, and we're good to go. Now, we could go ahead and get a whole bunch of stuff right now. In fact, why don't I go ahead and get the stuff I know we're going to need for sound? And do that by sudo pac man hyphen capital S, also. Also, hyphen utils. Also, hyphen plugins. Then we're going to need PayVu control and Pulse audio. Now, I could preface this with needed like this hyphen hyphen needed. And if it has one of those programs, it will not reinstall it. It'll skip it. Hit enter. Yep. Want them all. Okay, so you see it's pretty small. It's less than 6 megabyte. Download size, less than 30 megs installation. But this will take care of the sound. We won't have to guess about sound. We will have sound. So we've already taken out our CD-ROM. We've already taken out our USB drive. We've installed a desktop environment. We've installed a desktop manager, and we have ready to go. So as soon as this is done, I'm going to tap in reboot and hit enter. And we should reboot into our XFCE desktop. First, we'll boot into LightDM, or I guess technically we'll boot into Grub. <laughs> and then we'll see our mouse. And then a login screen. And don't worry, this login screen is horrific, ugly on LightDM. But they do it that way, I think, on purpose so that you can customize it any way you want it. And that's, there we go. So once you get this far, you hit, type in your password and hit enter. Or press the enter key. Don't really hit it, I guess. And boomo presto, there you go we do now and we have sound
Nice. Hopefully you can hear that. So we've got a fully operational system here. It's very bare bones. It has hardly anything. Let's see how much it took. The DF hyphen H fully installed 3.3 gigabytes. Now keep in mind, I don't have any uh, programs installed. None. The only thing that's here is what came with it. Let's see, task manager uh, showing 15%, 6% of our RAM is being used. Pretty low. Here's what I need to do. Get out of full screen. Sorry, I should have done this already. Back to 100%. All right, and then I can control F, get back in full screen. Go back to settings and display. Let's go. That one looks pretty good. Okay, so there's your desktop. This is exactly what you'll see when you boot into your desktop. Now we're going to install some software because, like we say, there's really nothing in here. Even on the Internet, you don't have a browser. You don't have anything. Just bare minimal. And I'm not saying you're going to need. I'll go ahead and adjust this real quick. I'm not saying you're going to need all of this software. But at least it gives you a point to fourteen select colors like the text yellow. This is all cool, but appearance and go back to here. I don't like the palette. I know there's one there just there we go. I could still make it a little bigger, I guess. Make it bigger. All right. Now. I'm going to pause the video and go ahead and get started writing this stuff in. So, I'll be back. Yep. Okay, so you should be able to pause and write all that down or... Just actually uh, type it into your command line. So when I'm done, I'm going to hit enter. Now, if I've got all that spelt right, which I think I do. Yeah, I must have. So this is when it's completely installed. It'll be just barely over 3 gigs. So we already got two, so about 6 gigs total. All right. So while this is installing, we can actually go through and I can show you how to Go into your settings manager here and show you how to tweak this out just a little bit. Some of it's not going to work because we don't have anything in here yet, but we will. I usually enable my event sounds, fonts. I'll turn that up to bold, make it one larger. Make select, make mono space, make that bold as well. And this is just tweaks that I do. You don't have to do these tweaks. Depends on your eyes. What you think looks better? All right, so uh, I just turned that font up size, and I'm gonna not liking that, so I'll make it back to ten. There we go. All right, and the desktop. Not sure I can do anything in there. Yeah, background. Oh, let's go ahead and change it to that one for now. Menus, good to know there. Icon, make them a little smaller. Take them off of the desktop. Okay. Now go all settings. File manager settings, notification panel. We come back to that. I'll show you how to put that at the bottom. Unless you like it at the top. We're going to turn the screen saver off for now. For sure, you can adjust it any way you want it. I just don't want it interfering with the uh, download. Now, I take my workspaces down to one, but and then you'll see they appear here. If I take it to two, then what? So I'll minimize this, minimize this, 
All right, so there's nothing on two. So let's go back to here. Now you can see there they are. So there's my second workspace with nothing on it. My first workspace with all this on it. So I take mine down to one. It's easily changed if that's what you want to do. That's what it's there for. XFCE terminal. I just did a little adjustments there. Leave that there. Display. We're in good shape. Mouse and touchpad. See, I don't really have any themes. So change it to that one to make it bigger. We can get some more. We can get some more mouses. All right. Power manager. I'm gonna make sure that's power button is pressed. Shut down. Thank you. Now you're on a laptop. You may want. You might want to keep some of these settings on, like the display. You might want that to go off after 10 minutes. But myself, on a real computer or on a computer, I'm not. I'll just turn that off. Power management would be a good idea for you to leave yours on, though, on a laptop. All right, now removable drives like USB. We're going to tell it to mount those as soon as we stick them in. The rest of those is usually good. You're welcome to go through them. All right, accessibility. Now here's where you change that light DM or the greeter setting. But for right now, I'll leave it just like it is. Session and startup is where you can go and turn stuff on or off if you want it to start up when you start up or not. And I don't have an in printer installed, so as far as I'm concerned, that's pretty good the way it is right now. So that takes care of that. Now, let's see. See where we're at here. 25%. Still got a ways to go. Uh, I can go ahead and show you this real quick. We're going to go to the panel. And we're going to select panel 2. And that's this panel right here. Now, you might like this. If you do, leave it. For all means, you can add to it, subtract to it, whatever you want to do. You can leave your menu taskbar up here, any way you want to do it. That's the beauty of this thing. You can't do all of this in Windows. You can do some customization in Windows XP, but even that don't hold a candle to what you can do in Linux. Okay, I've got uh, panel 2, which is this, and I'm just going to click on the minus button, and let's get rid of it. Don't ask me, are you sure? I'm going to say absolutely. Now I go back up here to... There, and we're going to reselect panel one, which is up here. We're going to unlock the panel, reach up here with our mouse, grab that bar, left click and hold it down. And let me make it a little bigger. Left click, hold it down, and drag it down to where you want it. Appearance. Okay. Adjust the size automatically of our icons. Thank you. We'll do that. Items. This. Is application button and this is a standard menu I like we'll get rid of that I'm gonna say yep and I'm gonna click on the plus button and I'm gonna type in here WISK and we have the whisker menu plug-in I'm gonna say add and I'm gonna close and I'm gonna highlight it and use the up arrows and move it all the way over where the start button normally is all right, so that's all I can do in here, or all I'm going to do in here. I'm going to say close. There's our terminal with a 37%, so we still got time. Now I'm going to right-click on the Start button, and I'm going to select Properties. Now, on the Appearance, I'm going to show as a list. Well, here, there's where it defaults to. There you go. That's what it's going to look like. Sort of like Windows 10 with the icons and such over here. I don't like it. This is the one I like, show as a list. Left click on that, now you'll see the accessories and all your categories and stuff of that nature. But you'll notice they all got these helpers with them. Get what they call in that, but I'm gonna turn that off. Show category name, show application tool tips, no thank you. Show application descriptions, no thank you. Position categories next to the panel. That's right where I want it. Search entry. I don't really care if it's at the top or the bottom. In this case, it's at the bottom. I don't really care. So your preference. Background opacity. If you want to 
turn it down. You can turn it the opacity down. That's the menu here. Let's see if I can tell you that. Take it down to about 39. And now you can see through it. Okay, now panel button. We are going where it says applications right there. I'm going to mouse click in that. And I'm going to change this to Arch Linux 32. And I'm going to tell it to show icon and the title. Notice it changed, Arch Linux 32. Now you can click on the icon. Go up here and tell it to show all icons. And for the search, type in A-R-C-H, Arch. There's one. Left click on it and say OK. Now it changed down here. All right. Behavior. You can add items or you can tell it to how many to keep. Include the favorites, commands, search. Oh, not really much to do in those categories. You're welcome to look and see what you want to do. But see, we got a nice background now. That down there out of the way, and here's what our menu looks like. Accessories. I don't want to go through this because right now we're installing a bunch of stuff, and it's downloading them, and it's going to prevent us from doing a lot of this stuff. I guess we can change, while we're waiting here, we can change the uh, light DM. So go to settings, find light DM right there. Gonna ask you for your password. So yep. And now we're gonna customize our welcome screen. Uh, make it bigger for one thing. Bold. Make it bigger. Now for the theme, though, we we don't have really any theme. We will when it gets through installing, but for now we'll just select. What's what we have? Okay, 17 is the size. The theme is the headway to dark. Defaults is icon. Let's see, you have a choice. Yep, headway to. Okay, cool. Now, here we're going to select our color and let's go with the blue. We're going to take that off. Here, you could add a user picture. I guess that's a workaround right there. You can put your picture in there. It has to be, what does it have to be? It has to be in the file system. It has to be in here, if I'm not mistaken. Can't just pick it. Maybe, let's find out. Is there anything on here? No, probably not. File. Other location. Don't show me my, nope. Thought maybe it might show me my host machine. Other location. Oh. Huh. Well. You could always just select something out of. Background. Those are in user. Share. Background. XFCE. Let's just leave it like that. Okay. Now that should show up under user photograph, user image, and we should have a solid blue color. So I'm going to say save. Oop, wait, one more thing. Change the position of it. Put it right there. We could also change the size of it. Miscellaneous, you could add to it here. So I'm going to say, say close. Calling LibreOffice. That's uh, like Microsoft Word, but it's free. <laughs> it does everything. Now, it may be a little difficult because in order to interchange, say I put a, a document on a USB drive and went to a Windows program and tried to open it up, well, unless I have the, the Microsoft fonts, it's probably not going to look right. And without Yay, the AUR helper, not sure how to get 
Microsoft fonts. Hadn't got that far. Not enough time in the days, as they say. 383. Okay, so now it's going to create an image of everything it's just gotten. Right there, you can see it. And it put it in the boot menu. Created a RAM FS type of file image. I want to see if it skipped anything. Oh, there it is. Encounter during the build. The image may not be complete. I think that's probably because I'm in a virtual box. Okay, I'm going to scroll up and see if we skipped anything. Huh. Well, I'm wondering where the top of it is. Huh. Well, I guess I won't tell. <laughs> so now we got our start menu down here at the lower left hand side. We're going to need to do something with our fonts. I can see that's kind of hard to see. Like, not quite filled in. Let me log out real quick. See what our login screen looks like. Wow, what a wonderful difference. And that's it. Let me run through the menu real fast for you. Let's go to accessories. We've got a bulk rename tool in case you want to rename a whole bunch of files. We got an application finder in case you wanted to type in something. Let's see, clam tk, and it'll bring it up. You just click on it under accessories again. So we got bulk rename, application finder, clam tk, which is a antivirus program. And we got disk, GNOME disk, which uh, show you information about your disk. It's a very good utility. You can uh, benchmark your disk, tell a lot about it. You can even format a disk. That's a really good program. Clam TK, you update assistant, you're going to want to do updates yourself. Apply, go back, now check for updates, check for updates. And it's always kind of a jumpy program. Go back to the accessories here. We got the calculator. PC Man FM is a file manager. Okay, now we'll go back to accessories. Mouse pad that comes in. Redshift. We just talked about that. Screenshot. We're taking screenshots. Sensor views, X archiver for doing archives. Okay, education, that LibreOffice math that came in with LibreOffice. Under graphics, we got GIMP, Krita. Both of those are for manipulating photographs or images, pictures. Uh, Nomax is an image viewer, my preferred image viewer. In internet, we got Firefox for a web browser and Qubit Torrent for a torrent handler. Under multimedia, now I got quite a bit of stuff here. We got a Sunder CD Ripper, Audacity, which is, as you can see, for manipulating waves. For Ciro, a disk burning program. DVD is another disk uh, burning program, especially specialized in DVDs. GUBC is for looking at your webcam. Handbrake is a great converter, converting one file extension to another. K3B is probably one of the best burning programs available to Linux. Kden Live is for uh, editing video files. OBS Studio, that's what I'm using right now to record this. Parole Media Player, that came in with XFCE. Pulse Audio, we installed that. Simple Screen Recorder for recording videos from your screen, from your computer, or uh, what am I trying to say, your monitor. <laughs> VLC is one of the best, absolutely one of the best video players, MP3 players, or what have you. All right, 
Thanks for that's updated. Let's see what was in multimedia, handbrake, K3B, Caden Live, OBS Studio, uh, simple screen recorder and VLC, we just said. Under Office, we got LibreOffice, which is like Microsoft Word, only better. Okay. Now, one thing you will have to do is go into your preferences. See, it might be in the tool. Customize options, maybe. And find the category that says save under general. Code. Oh, this is different than. Huh. Usually. You have one that says save as. Here we go. Document type save as. And you want to change that from the ODDF to something to do with the word. I think that's the one I've been using, but I don't know that that's the best one. You may have to experiment, but this saves it as a dot dot. Okay, we'll fly and say okay. And like I said, without those Microsoft fonts, I'm not sure just how good that's going to work. So that was under Office. Under Settings, that's all the built-in default stuff. System. We'll start at the bottom here. We got System Profiler. This benchmarker will tell you most everything you want to know about your system. And some things you probably didn't want to know. <laughs> so we'll go back to the system. System monitor. Let's see just how much resources. This is like task manager in Windows. I gave it two cores of the processor and it's using a little over 650 megabytes of RAM at this point. So far it's used one megabyte of the six gigabytes that I allocated for swap space. which was probably during the time that uh, I was doing that download and then looking through the menu here. Right, G parted, that's a disk utility for formatting, partition, changing, erasing. H top, sort of like system monitor on its terminal based. We like the end, we just changed. Now packages, this is the GNOME Disk Package Manager. And so if you want anything, let's see, Solitaire. You just type it in right there, hit enter. And it says right there, spell it wrong, program it. Solace layout, free sale. Hey, patience, the selection of solitaire games. Looking for all right. Let's see if it's in here. A I S L E R I O T. See what it has. There it is. So you're going to tick it right there. Apply the changes. And it's just that easy. All right. So well, that's it. That's it in a nutshell. You're ready to start. You got a list of good some programs and it's time to just start learning about arch linux i think that's going to do it for this video let me get out of full screen here click on the turn it off button shut down and i thank you very much for watching and until the next time i will see you on the next video bye